today we have a teardown of something that is almost as rare as good case reviews. It's average. Not worth buying. Ah, why? This is the Red Devil Power Color RX Vega 64 card. So this is the second of the partner cards that we've gotten. The first was the Strix, which is still not out. Uh, this isn't out yet either, but the fact that it came in should hopefully be indicative of a wave of incoming Vega partner cards. We will see. For the meantime, we can tear it down, look at the internals a bit, and then hopefully it'll come to market. But either way, we've got one to work on for now. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus 3120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake rain fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. So starting out with the basics, this is a three fan cooler, obviously, and those fans are how big? These are about 85 millimeter fans. And around them we have, I think this is a, this red is a plastic. So it's just a plastic faceplate with uh, what feels like a, a metal sort of shroud around that. Backside, we have the back plate, which is aluminum. And then it looks like it's all Phillips heads. So I'm not seeing anything except for Phillips heads for this teardown, which will make it easy. This is a 2.5 slot card. So it's one of the larger ones. And then for your IO, you've got two display port, two HDMI, uh, and also two eight pins for the power connectors, which are inset ever so slightly. It looks like into the card, except the uh, cooler protrudes past the PCB quite a bit. So it is one of the larger cards that we've worked with lately. This isn't big enough to measure it, so I won't bother. Uh, let's start with the teardown. This is mostly going to be Phillips heads on the back side. The way this assembles is you can see the red, um, the red support beams here. So these red beams are feeding through to the screws going through the back plate. A couple more over here. And then this middle one does not, this connects to the cooler in the middle. So there's only one screw that's not connected directly to the faceplate. This is also connected directly into the heat sink. So the two spring loaded screws go into that. Oh, another one, three. There might be more still under the back plate. Yep. So that back plate did have to separate. And now we got to disconnect the fans, which is probably going to LEDs. Wait, what? Oh, no. Where's the contact on the HBM? That is very bad. Uh, okay, so turn of events. <laughs> we have a video where we tested limited contact on HBM caused by different mounting or a different uh, height than the GPU. Is that what's going on here? Because there would be thermal paste residue on the HBM. You can actually see a little bit of it in the corner. I didn't touch that. That's. Uh, yeah, you can see it here too. There's a very slight indent right there that shows the um, the contact, the limited contact to the HBM. So what? 40 micrometers. So the question is, is that the height difference of the GPU and the HBM? How can we show this on camera the best? Hey everyone, we are pausing the teardown for a second. So this is about a week later now, the time that I'm doing this voiceover. We spoke with Power Color after the teardown immediately and brought the thermal paste lack of contact to their attention. And they had a pretty quick response. So fortunately the unit they sent us was pre-production, which meant that they were able to, according to them, make changes in time for production. So Power Color made the changes, as they told me. They sent an image of them taking apart the new card off the line 
and the mass production cards should have the thermal paste contact you're seeing here. They basically solved for the problem by putting a whole lot more on there, which is fine because the excess will just squish out and then the gap will hopefully be filled. So that should solve some of the concern that we had initially and definitely good job by Power Color for catching it in time or for listening to us catching it in time to make a change. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully it comes out the way they've said for the production models, but it looks like the problem has been solved at this point. Oh, and just before anyone asks, yes, we tested this before the teardown. So in our review, when it comes out, we'll have numbers for the pre-thermal paste fixed version and the post-thermal paste fixed version. So you can see what the actual difference is in HBM temperatures. It'll be kind of cool. And that review is coming soon. Not 100% sure yet. We're waiting on drivers, but shouldn't be too long at this point. So this explains a few things in terms of the height difference in the thermals. With some of the earlier reports of Vega, it was noted by Tom's Hardware that the HBM height could potentially be different from the GPU height. Now we actually did some contact pressure paper testing of this that will be visible in a separate video that already went live by the time this went up. But uh, just to kind of recap this for anyone who missed that content, the very short of it is that with uh, this is a recessed package. So with a recessed package, you would expect coverage something like this uh, or like this. This is also recessed. This is the Strix. So the Strix has the same package type as this power color card as opposed to raised, which would be this one where you can see the full, like you can't even really make out the HBM versus the GPU because the interposer has an epoxy resin layer on top of it that comes up and meets the surface of the cooler. So it looks like there's full coverage. With the recessed packages, although there's not much of a thermal difference normally, you can see a difference uh, in the contact area. But what you always see, and this is without thermal paste, by the way. So big difference here. These ones do not have thermal paste on them. But when you apply thermal paste to them, it does make contact to the HBM. That's what thermal paste is ultimately for, it's to fill in these gaps. And what we don't see on the power color one is it is a card with thermal paste applied on like those pressure tests we did. And yet you don't see any thermal paste on the HBM. So what this says to me is that this uh, is an issue of the HBM being lower than the GPU on the package. And this meter, this feeler gauge, which was recommended by a reader is 0 0.0, well, roughly 0 0.04, 0 0.038 millimeters thick. Uh, the difference in GPU package to HBM height as reported earlier was 40 micrometers. So this is basically 40 micrometers. So uh, that explains quite a few things. <laughs> and uh, thermally is, is, is why things are not going to be uh, so good when you look at the charts for this card versus the others. But anyway, that's, that's a problem we'll have to explore further uh, when you see the other content. But as for now, let's go over the rest of this. This is a recessed package as stated. Power Color has no selection choice over this. AMD kind of sells them as they come in and it's just distributed evenly. So what we have here is a, a doubled 12 phase or something like that anyway. Uh, HBM phase down here. Watch our reference PCB teardown for more on this. And they've sized up the PCB so it is a bit different and they've sized it up to accommodate that larger cooler. Three BIOS. Now they switch over here. Okay so other stuff here. Giant, giant horrible thermal pad on this side. Uh, if you ever see thermal pads this thick, it's not a good thing. That's just more insulating layer for the heat to try and get through when it gets into the, uh, the heat sink. So that's bad. Okay. So why do these channels exist? This, these milled channels that is to accommodate capacitors. So raised, these are raised, uh, or I guess protruding blocks you can see coming out down here with thermal pads on top of them. That sinks it into the heat sink. At least they didn't make the thermal pad that entire thickness. That's an upside. 
This is our MOSFET contact where you have the high side and the low side FETs. You see the large and the small MOSFETs. Those are high side and low side. They are exposed copper MOSFETs. So they actually cool extremely well and their heat uh, transfers a lot more readily into these heat sinks than some of the other MOSFETs we look at. Uh, here's where you can see the clear disconnect between the HBM and the cold plate. The cold plate is actually raised up. So uh, now the question becomes, is this power color's fault uh, or AMD's fault? Who do you blame? I'm just using this as a gauge right now. The plate is the same height across the whole thing. So the plate's the same raised height. So then the question is, is it AMD's fault for having HBM that's lower than the GPU, or is it power color's fault for not accounting for that? I think that's, that's kind of what we need to come to a conclusion on. And I'm sure they would each point the finger at the other one. So um, yeah, well, I mean, that's very revealing what we saw here. And I think I, I am so hung up on this that I don't even really know what else to talk about because this baffles me how much of an oversight that is by somebody. Uh, heat pipes. So cold plate for direct-ish contact, we have one, two, three, four, five pipes, with, or six, six pipes. Uh, for actually direct, well, it's not that direct, but sort of inset, we have one, two, three, four pipes that are inset into the metal uh, that have sort of indirect contact with the cold plate. I say indirect because it's raised and they're not going straight through that area. This pipe primarily goes through the top part of the L shape of the VRM. And this one goes through where the chokes are. So you can see some chokes right here. And you can see the other side of the VRM, the L shape. The capacitor bank is actually not cooled. It's in here underneath uh, the heat pipes with no direct contact to anything. It doesn't really need to be cooled though, to be fair. Um, so yeah, the L shape gives us uh, an ideal VRM. It reduces the propagation delays uh, because everything's closer to the GPU and the HBM. So that's a good thing that AMD did. Uh, as for this, this is, where's our, uh, let's see. Okay, so this contacts, or this this is where the pinouts are. That's why that dents in there. And otherwise, just a large heat sink and air cooler. Yep, just a, just a big heat sink. That's all. Uh, three fans pre-connected to one wire, so that's nice at least. Some bumpers here just to prevent warping from the heat sink. And then, okay, together. This is so, so bad. Some bumpers, not thermal pads, just bumpers. Controller, which is, <laughs> controller is an IR35217, so that would be the same one as used on the AMD reference card, the IR35217. And again, you can watch our reference PCB teardown by Buildzoid for info on that. I mean, there's nothing. That's really it. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if this has to do with the GPU. Unmolded G2952 with actually a pencil mark on it. This is unmolded. This one is not a raised epoxy resin, uh, like interposer cover. It's unmolded. So it looks like they've at least flagged that. Presumably that would mean they're doing something. I mean, if you're going to flag it, it's normally because you're trying to do something about it. So I would assume that would mean another heat sink that makes contact, <laughs> but I guess that is not the case. So, uh, yeah, I, that's all for this one. Really. If there's nothing left. You can subscribe for more as always and go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our stickers. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.